The following newscast is based on the wide world of social media. The stories are real. The reporters are really real because they are you, the members of social media. All Facebook names have been abbreviated for user protection. This is the Social News Media Network. Welcome to the SM Network, the only weekly newscast written by you, the wide world of social media. I'm Colin Cosell. Where's the teleprompter? Shut up. Of course, we'll have plenty of Super Bowl 46 coverage coming up, but first, our top stories. The past week once again revolved around politics, with the main focus being on the Republican race for presidential candidacy between Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich. Another debate was held, but we begin our coverage with a primary, this time in the often electorally challenged state of Florida with our Twitter reporter, it's just Florida, the, with our Twitter reporter, the tweet of God, God is tweeting now, who said, they're voting in Florida. That always bodes well. <laughs> Luckily, there were no hanging chads or voting issues as Romney ran away with the primary. The debate, however, created quite a buzz with our Twitter reporters, including Jill Morris, who had some specific insight on Mitt Romney saying, based on the way Romney turns his head to focus on opponents, He is part Velociraptor. (laughs) Jill Morris, clever girl. (laughs) Jurassic Park reference. Yay. While celebrity Twitter reporter Michael Ian uh, Ian Black, excuse me, summarized the whole debate by stating, solution that will please all Republicans, send Mexicans to the moon. Who's going to do the work? Now that Romney and Gingrich have proven to be the front runners, uh, members of Republican Party have started choosing sides. Former candidate Herman Cain recently endorsed Newt Gingrich, to which reporter Donald's dad tweeted, Herman Cain endorsing Gingrich is like Count Doku endorsing the Emperor. (laughs) Star Wars. Now for business news, where Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg filed for the initial public offering, or IPO, say with me, IPO, yes, of his social media mecca. Given the significance of this move, we expected a major buzz throughout the social media community, but what we learned from reporter Mike underscore FTW is that nothing had really changed, or as he succinctly put it, I could give a fuck about the Facebook IPO. (laughs) This now ends our coverage of the Facebook IPO. I'm glad we're glad that's over. In other news, the world of social media did actually go crazy over the meteorologically unproven winter meter known as Groundhog Day. According to Twitter reporter Webby2001, the holiday has gotten a little bit out of hand as he said, I'm saddened that the crass commercialism of Groundhog Day has obscured its deeply religious meaning. Today, I'm spending it with family. Groundhog Day is the new Christmas. It's great. While some of our reporters came up with their own spin on the holiday, as Twitter's Cornlog said, Punxsutawney Phil Spector just came out of his hole and killed a prostitute. (laughs) The following day, however, was named after internet meme, The Honey Badger. It was called February 3rd, The Honey Badger Day. There's a picture of The Honey Badger with a quote that reads, while somewhere in Philadelphia, his distant cousin Phil is concerned about whether or not there will be six more weeks of winter, The honey badger rests comfortably in the knowledge that there will certainly be 51 more weeks of not giving a (laughs) That's That's right, honey badger don't give a (laughs) The start of February also marked the start of Black History Month. One of our uh, reporters' Twitter's Eli Braden had a special message in honor of the month saying, Happy Black History Month to Kim Kardashian's genitals. Special notice. Uh, The social news media network and its employees do not endorse Eli Braden's special message about Black History Month. (laughs) Gotta keep all the viewers happy. Now it's time for this week's Trendy McTrenderson. In a twist of social media irony, uh, fast food giants McDonald's and Subway, both who have clowns as their mascots, Jared's a clown, decided to start campaigns driven entirely by Twitter hashtags. Mickey D's wanted people to share their heartwarming stories regarding the world's largest fast food chain with the hashtag McDStories, while Subway wanted people to trend the hashtag $5 footlong. In honor of their February campaign, we're all laughing at the same thing because it merely prompted a lot of sexual innuendo, as was exemplified in reporter The Nick Xander's, I wonder if they can fit that whole thing in their mouth. Hashtag $5 foot long. The McDonald's campaign proved to be a massive detriment. Of the many unflattering reports coming to us, Jody Ray Mason summarized the bulk of them by saying, hashtag McD stories, my dad ate there, pulled off the road, puked violently in empty cooler, Hasn't been back since. I was seven. 
Thanks for that memory. <laughs> I'm loving it. Another trendy Mick Trenderson was a picture of Sarah McLaughlin with an adorable dog from her highly depressing ASPCA ad campaign. One of our brilliant reporters out there to, uh, decided to take a screen grab and write, Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin, and I'm about to ruin your whole f***ing day. <laughs> In the eyes of the <clears throat> Are we sad yet? Oh, that's fine. It's now time for sports! In what easily could have been one of our leading stories this week, the United States of social media was all a flutter about the hashtag big game, a.k.a. Super Bowl 46, between the New York Giants and New England Patriots. Before the game, however, many people were posting about Animal Planet's Puppy Bowl. That's adorable. To which Facebook reporter Nathan C. responded, Every time I hear Puppy Bowl, I imagine the Burrito Bowl at Chipotle, except probably cuter and better tasting. We do not condone the eating of puppies, Nathan. The Puppy Bowl also provided our news crew with some interesting observations, such as s and very own Nick Ruggia, who noted, Summary of Puppy Bowl 8, dogs still don't understand the concept of football. <laughs> and probably never will. While Gay Sarcasm, love that handle, reported, Just once I want to see a dog throw the challenge flag and then smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Smoking dogs are adorable. Even the adorable hamster blimp got some coverage, as Twitter's Johnny D 41 observed, Blimp hamsters are the Ryan Seacrest of the animal kingdom. <laughs> Sorry, Seacrest. After days and hours of buildup, the game finally got underway between the Giants and Patriots. Our Twitter reporter Darren Elmore kicked off the coverage by saying, Here's my Super Bowl prediction. The Giants will play the Patriots, briefly interrupted by an aging woman with cricket legs for arms. <laughs> That's Madonna he's talking about. While Borowitz report astutely noted, Definition of the Super Bowl, gigantic people taking forever to move forward which is also the definition of Walmart. <laughs> Just lost our Midwest fans. Reporter Rob Delaney <laughs> kept, with, uh, kept our other Twitter reporters in check with the following, if you tweet about anything other than the Super Bowl over the next three hours, you are literally worse than Osama bin Laden. Yeah. America. America. <laughs> as the game progressed, the Giants defense progressively got stronger, as was pointed out by the Sklar brothers of Twitter, who noted, the Giants are hitting harder than Chris Brown after a Good Morning America appearance. <laughs> doesn't get old. As we all know, the material girl herself, Madonna, performed the halftime show and with very little positive feedback. In fact, there was even widespread confusion about who was performing, as was apparent in Eugene Merman's report, Lady Gaga looks old. <laughs> the Gaga comparisons did not stop there, as more coverage from Borowitz's report said, at her Super Bowl halftime show, Madonna will give us a sneak preview of Lady Gaga's halftime show in 2032. <laughs> If I could turn back time, but that's share. <laughs> Even special guest CeeLo Green didn't help win over our reporters as, uh, as Facebook's Amanda E. reported, CeeLo Green singing his ass off couldn't even tear my eyes away from the 53-year-old lip-syncing in a mini and hooker boots. <laughs> it's time to give it up, Madonna. As the show wrapped up, Twitter reporter Mikey O. 21 found a way to unify all viewers by saying, both Giants and Patriots fans agree, Madonna was awful. Aww. It's time to retire. Amidst the game and halftime madness were the infamous Super Bowl commercials, most of which received a lukewarm response. Amidst the commercial madness were previews for forthcoming movies, including Battleship, which is based on the famous board game of the same name. Our Twitter movie analyst, Curly Comedy, reports she is, quote, looking forward to the movie Battleship and its famously tense scene. F-12, miss. F-11, miss. D-2, miss. <laughs> It's going to be a great movie. Another movie on the way is an adaptation of the Dr. Seuss children's book, The Lorax, whose rating surprised reporter Ari Vukaitis as he said, The Lorax is rated PG. Oh, right. That one topless scene. <laughs> Dr. Seuss loved boobies. It's true. The game itself wrapped up with an exciting finish as the New York Giants went on to win by a final of 21 to 17. According to reporter That Chris George, that means there was still one more bet to be made on the game, saying... 20 bucks says Madonna has sex with the Giants tonight. That's over 50 people on a team. She can handle it. Now we wrap up our Super Bowl 46 coverage with two more reports, one coming from Twitter's faux Trent Dilfer, who reported that despite her attempts to get people to pray for her husband, Giselle Bunchen is going to divorce Brady if he loses Super Bowl. Quote, I'm tired of him spending my money on shoes. <laughs> He likes Uggs, and those are for women. And finally, an observation from s &M Network's Nick Ruggia, who observed, the Patriots are the prom queen that got knocked up at 18 and doesn't realize she's fat now. 
Eli Manning is the valedictorian she made fun of. And that's going to do it for our Super Bowl coverage. And that's going to do it for this week's SNM Network Report. Be sure to tune in next week for more of the top stories as reported by the wide world of social media, as well as to find out if you are one of our reporters. And if you'd like to be a contributor, take a screenshot of that funny Facebook update or tweet you see and send it to us at snmnetwork2012 at gmail.com. On behalf of all of us at the SNM Network, uh, <clears throat> Network, puberty hits again. I'm Colin Cosell reminding you to watch what you say because we are. Where's your teleprompter? Your mom's a teleprompter. Aww. Hmm. Yeah!